Now let's move into the clinical picture of the patients experiencing COVID-19. You all are familiar with the common signs and symptoms of COVID-19. We know that some patients exhibit no signs, but the, one, but the vast majority of patients exhibit very mild signs of symptoms of COVID-19, including cough, mild fever, or some shortness of breath. As the disease progresses, the severity of illness also increases and may lead to um, productive cough, high fever, chest pressure, or chest pain. But what about the uncommon signs and symptoms of COVID-19? The symptoms that we wouldn't normally associate with a, a, a respiratory virus. We found that associated with COVID-19 are signs and symptoms of gastrointestinal dis disorder, loss of taste and smell, nausea, diarrhea. Even the presence of mouth sores have been found in patients that have screened positive for COVID-19. And why is this? We know that the COVID-19 virus attaches to the ACE2 receptors and these ACE2 receptors are prevalent throughout the entire G GI tract, and that may explain some of the GI symptoms that we're seeing. But we're also seeing stroke and blood clots and otherwise healthy young adults. COVID toes or a purple discolorization appearing like frostbite uh, on the periphery of individuals along with rashes. We're seeing this as a sign and symptom. I'm not gonna go into children during this presentation, but the multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children, um, although children are very low risk for developing COVID-19, their symptoms are also unusual. They tend to have a fever along with abdominal pain, vomiting, and diarrhea. So as mentioned, the severity of illness also correlates with the symptoms that the patient is experiencing. The mild to moderate symptoms, the patient can stay at home, quarantining themselves, avoiding contact with others. And they may just experience that slight fever or a persistent cough and may not seek medical care. The data released from China showed that 80% of their population that had been tested for COVID-19 and, and were positive um, showed mild to moderate symptoms. The data now coming out of the United States mirrors this, and that 80% of our patients also exhibit mild to moderate symptoms. As the disease progresses, these symptoms become more severe and may require hospitalization. What we found in our data, along with the data coming out of China, is that approximately 14% of, of the cases develop severe illness, while only 5% go on to progress to critical illness. Those patients that need hospitalization showing only, only moderate symptoms need to be monitored very closely because the disease progresses rapidly and can turn into severe illness and even critical illness very quickly. And we know this because several studies coming out of multiple countries have studied this and have a predictable progress of the disease. Day one through five tend to be those milder symptoms that the patient can self-quarantine and hopefully recover. At day five, people with pre-existing conditions may experiencing, experience difficulty breathing. Day seven seems to be the turning point where if the individual is gonna recover, they start to see a lessening of these symptoms. Or if the disease progresses, these patients start exhibiting chest discomfort, increased difficulty breathing, and possibly blue lips, leading them to seek hospitalization and medical care. These patients have to be watched closely because quickly into day eight through 10, if the disease is gonna progress, we start seeing a rapid de deterioration of these patients, including increased difficulty breathing, uh, decreased oxygenation, and signs of acute respiratory distress syndrome. So we have to monitor them closely and be ready to respond quickly.